Hey guys and welcome to this 13th video in the series of implementing secure CI-CD pipelines. So in the last video we integrated static application security testing in the pipeline. And in this video we will look at how can we integrate dynamic application security testing. Now DAST refers to attacking the behavior of an like sorry mimicking the behavior of an attacker where we try to attack the application from outside and that is only possible when the application is deployed. So this is one of the stage that can be happen only after the deployment. One of the other thing is usually an authenticated test scan takes a longer time. So it's practically not feasible to integrate a complete authenticated test in the pipeline. However, we can integrate the baseline scan. We will be using Zap for this particular purpose and in the baseline scan we will make sure that we are able to find any of the low hanging vulnerabilities within the CI CD pipeline. Also one of the thing is uh, I'll be making another video on how can we actually uh, take full utilization of Selenium and then can use Zap for the authenticated scans and that is I think a whole separate topic I'll cover in some other video. In this case, uh, usually Zap takes a lot of Docker space, so I'll create a separate host for um, Zap. So we have currently two instances. We will launch one more instance, which will be one to itself, and it will be a free. Let's say it be a medium itself. And in the security group, we need to use the existing. DevSecOps group yeah. and we'll launch the instance and we will use the same SSH key. Now I'll install the docker on this particular instance. If you haven't uh, been through the previous videos, please refer the previous video on how to install docker. Okay, so I have SSH into my Zap box that the instance that I just created and installed Docker in the machine. Now let's go ahead and configure the SSH credentials for this machine in Jenkins so that we can remotely uh, log into this machine and invoke the Zap command to run the Zap scan. For that, we need to go to Jenkins credentials this Jenkins and here is add credentials we need to do SSH username with private key let's say the name is Zap username will be Ubuntu private key and we will enter the private key from here and we'll save it so once we have this done Then we need to add this particular stage in the pipeline. So how can we do this is let's go in the Jenkins file and we know this this stage should happen after the deployment. So here the deployment stage is over. Let's add another stage that is dast. So I hope with the time we are integrating so many of the things it will be clear how easy it is to integrate any of the new task. So inside this stage there will be steps and then we need to use the SSH agent for which the name we have provided is Zap. And then we will use the shell script to run SSH okay so we have uh, made the SSH command to use uh, don't use the strict host checking and then we are logging as user Ubuntu on this particular IP which is nothing but the IP of zap 13 and in last 44 and you can see here 13 and 44 
and after logging in we are running a command that hey docker please run uh, OWASP zap to docker stable image which actually runs zap baseline.py python script and with hyphen t we need to give the url of our web application so our url is http and the ip to the production instance that is tomcat and on port 8080 with the name web app this looks good then we need to close the docker command and the shell script command okay so this is the only line that we need to use to perform a scan let's say how it goes and when we now go here in Jenkins let's say build now and it got failed which says SSH agent interface okay okay so the SSH agent takes the agent name in uh, this as a format list kind of thing but I haven't provided in that way so let me just add it this and it will be like this now let's try to run this now it's running let's see in blue ocean let's wait till the dash stage okay so by the time it reached uh, the dash stage we can see it failed and it says a strict key host checking no such command line thing and this is due to one of my silly mistakes it's a strict host key checking and I have written a strict key host checking so let me just correct this and let me just save this and let's say restart test I think I need to build it again so it has started let's wait by the time it comes to dast and finally this time we can see uh, the dast has started the process let's see so it has successfully SSH'd into the zap box and it's now pulling up the zap to docker stable image from docker hub once it completes, the, completes this particular step then will it, it will start uh, analyzing the web application for dynamic application security testing and for checking for vulnerabilities so we can see it has completed pulling up the image it seems it has started uh, the script somehow it has created some preferences directory and uh, I think in background it's performing the dynamic application security testing scan let's wait for the results so here is how you can see the dast has been failed and now this time this is not failed due to any of the errors this has failed due to the fact that zap has identified these vulnerabilities so there are 11 warnings and 13 test cases that have been passed so these are some of the tests that were conducted now zap baseline scan only covers passive scanning so it typically covers information disclosure, checking out for error messages, uh, things like access protection not enabled, X frame options not set. So these are the things. So now you can go ahead one by one with each vulnerability and check whether it's a false positive or a true positive. 
But now, in order to continue the pipeline, whether the build fails also, because in our case, as I said earlier, that for ground zero stage, we don't need to fail the build as soon as we get any vulnerability until we get to a maturity level where we are sure that no such vulnerability is being hosted, is being analyzed by any of the tool for a given particular product at that time. Okay, so do this particular thing if we just go in our Jenkins file and the place where we are doing this particular scanning we can say just also if this results an error just pipe true so that it always returns a success state and we can use these particular things uh, to analyze afterwards for a false positive so this is how we integrated dast in our pipeline now if i rebuild this particular application this will uh, successfully pass the test case as we have provided a condition that whether the test fails in the test case uh, just make the pipeline continue for this particular movement so that's it for this video there are few more things left we will be looking forward towards integrating port scanning and checking of any of the SSL errors with SSLIs then we will be using Nikto uh, for web application vulnerability scanning and uh, by now I hope that you will be having a fair understanding of if you can able to use any tool and you know what is its actual purpose and you think the tool is worthy of that particular purpose you can easily integrate in the pipeline uh, uh, with but one of the condition is that it should not take much more time also one of the thing that I forgot to mention is in the SAST uh, we have observed that it takes mm, a very long time to complete a particular scan so one of the one of the like things that you can do to submit SAS scan is just uh, make chunks of code make chunks of independent indi independent code that are not dependent on each other and submit them in parallel for analysis analysis so in this way you can increase the speed of SAST also in a pipeline so thanks for uh, viewing this video i hope you like it and in the later videos we will implement some more things in the pipeline before we end our first uh, part so thanks a lot and have a great time